I'm Beth Ann. What's up? I'm Ayla. This is Let's Talk BL, a boys love podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. It is Sunday, Series Sunday, that day of the week where we talk all things one series and one series only. Yes. Yet again, it is a late Series Sunday. This time it's not my fault. We take turns. That's true. We take the turns. Uh, Last time it was my fault. This time, no, not my fault. I'm so excited to talk about this show. For so many reasons. Uh, we're talking my school president. We are. Oh, my gosh. What a journey everyone has had with this show. From being like, who are these boys? Why do we care about high schoolers? To being like, uh, yeah. this is the best show, GMMT. I feel about. like it was less about who are these boys and more about, like, I'm not going to watch a high school BL. Like, that was the whole conversation I saw the whole time. I was like, I'm not going to watch a high school BL. Like, I remember when this was announced. I was yeah. like, I'm really excited like, for the entire lineup. I will not be watching this show. Which is so <laughs> funny because so many BLs are set in high school, but there was something about this that felt so high school. Oh, no. At that point, I was like, I don't want to watch any more high school BLs. Like, I don't remember. I, see, I feel like a ton are not set in high school. Like, I watched the best story, but I watched the best story, and that one I really, like, held on. For. Like, I was like, mm. I am doing this for war. I am doing this for war. Like, I really, like... I would say 50-50 are high school because you had... Uh, really? 50% you think are in high school? Well, like, we just don't think about it, right? Where it's like, uh, The Eclipse was set in high school. Sure. Bad Buddy was set in high school. Not really, though. Bad Buddy was... Mo they met in high school, but the majority of Bad Buddy, they're in college. They're, yeah, they are in college. It's not really set in... Like, this is set in high school. The best story set in high school. Yeah, the yeah. Eclipse set in high school. Right. Like, that's different than Bad Buddy. Bad Buddy... You had high school flashbacks. We also like, yeah, we have a lot of shows that are set just in school in general. And right. I think people were just like, oh, school, but also just a uh, high school. Yeah, there is a big difference between like high school and college. And mm -hmm. like everybody is pretty much over college BLs even. Yeah. And so like yeah. to skip it all the way back to high school, I think everybody was like, mm, yeah, no, because I yeah. can't remember any other in high school. Can you? Besides um, the best story, the eclipse, and my school president. I feel like yes, but I'm like, obviously they're not coming to mind because it's one of those things where like uh star in my mind started in high school but, but again, again we for like, like fast, uh, episode yeah we like fast forward to college. yeah so i wouldn't call that set in high school um but yeah i think it's just the school in general people are like no i think it. it was high school i think people mm. are over college too but yeah. i think like it was the high school of it that it's like uh why are we sk <laughs> like why like what what why high school? Yeah, like yeah. what could possibly be there to tell? <gasps> and and yet, there was so much. There was so much. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts before we really get into the show because the show is just so cute. It's 12 episodes. It's on YouTube because it's GMM TV. Uh, it's really fun because this director... Al directed DBK. DBK, a classic. Theory of Love. Yes. Still Together. One of my personal favorites, Oxygen, which we haven't done a series Sunday for, right? No, I think we did do Oxygen. I remember talking about it. Because uh, Petch, Supina, right, it's so all, much. It's all such a blur, but we watched those so, so like, far apart. Right. That, like, I don't remember. I have to go back and look. Uh, and then the screenwriter... Also, screen wrote a lot of the things that this director has done, in addition to Ken Porsche, which was really funny. Interesting. So I have a question about this. Mm -hmm. How was this was this director out the main director, a, a side director? Because the only director. Off did Still Together. Uh, oh, so it's still, still together. together. That's my question. Because I know for a fact P. <sighs> off did Still Together. So yeah, I yeah. saw when you put on here that Al was the director of Still Together. I was like, how? how? Yeah. Give me a second. Uh <laughs> He, my school president. Because I feel like I haven't heard a ton from this director. No, and yeah. generally with like Piaf's crew, right? Like Piaf, yes. Jojo, like, you know, they kind of all stick together. So anybody right. that's worked with Piaf, I like have some familiarity with their name right. usually. Yeah, he's because listed. Because Piaf oh, also sorry. did He's DBK. listed as the screenwriter. Okay. I was like, mm, I don't know. about is. Okay. So he's the screenwriter of Together the Movie, Oxygen, Still Together, Dark Blue Kiss, Theory of Love, okay. Boy for Rent. I was going to say, the because director, Piaf also directed DBK. Yes. So, so I was like, how is this working? The director of, I'm assuming he's going to do the R Sky episodes of My School President. I would think so, yes. My School President is the first thing he's directed. Gotcha. And he was the assistant director for Moonlight Chicken, Bad Buddy, and Tale of a Thousand Stars. Gotcha. So he's like gotcha. part of, yeah, he's part of that P-Off team 
And yeah, other than JoJo, I'm unfamiliar with the rest of Piaf's team. Yeah, like I see them in all the like v- the reactions. you know reactions, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Because that's like a mixture of managers and I think assistant directors, production, it's just like, like team people. people. Yeah, yeah. And all those writers too, like the guy, one of the guys who wrote it, he was that character in Bad Buddy at the at the beach. Oh, cute. That like shows up. He's like right. one of the one of the writers. Uh, so yeah, this, this show definitely has some like rich GMM TV history yeah. behind it. Uh, it stars as 10 Gemini and as gun fourth. Yes. And really everyone else should be listed because everyone this else should be listed. Why, why are we not listing them as main characters? It was absolutely <laughs> an ensemble because really, uh, Satang and Winnie stole the show for me. So... I mean, I, I mean, can, Mark, though, Tucson, yes. like, Tucson really. I can list it. We also have as sound Satang, uh, as Win Winnie, as poor Ford. Oh my gosh. Tucson played by Mark and Pat played by prom. Yes. It was funny because a lot of these boys have been in many other things. But until this show and we talk about this a lot, that until they hit you. Until you're like, oh my gosh, you have my attention. They could be in 20 other things and you never really like register that person. Yeah, this show really, I feel like there wasn't, like I do believe that all of these people should be listed as like main cast. Mm -hmm. Because even if you think back to like Ep 11, well that's getting into the show. But like they really (laughs) did like lead, lead this show, not just Tin and Gun. For sure, I feel like. That's just, that's how I feel in my heart. Definitely <laughs> Ten and Gun got the most screen time. And right, because it was the about their relationship. Plot, but yeah, I definitely felt like it was solidly an ensemble. Because wherever Ten went, two went. Because, like, he had to be kind of the wingman. Yeah. And then Gun, of course, confided in all of his bandmates all the bandmates. time. Which was very sweet. Which is why I want to throw Captain on this list. You didn't list Captain oh, yeah. when you made this. But I think Captain He's a is straight. precious. <laughs> and, but I think yeah, Captain yeah, yeah. is just precious. True, true. And I think that he did great work in this show. He and so, so yes. What else yo, has Captain been in? Nothing as far as I know. Let me see. He, he, was, uh, he was a bad buddy high school boy. Okay. Oh, he was in The Gifted. He oh, was in The cute. Gifted, too, and Blacklist. Ugh. So he's been in more I than s- a lot of these these little baby boys. Yeah, I still need to watch The Gifted and The Blacklist. Yeah, I really I really love Captain. Yeah, so he wasn't on this original list because, yes, a straight. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, re- I really liked Captain also, in this. I, I thought he was fresh. I, he, got, he got a cute little... A cute little side story. And I think that's what I really liked about this show, too, is that, like, they incorporated so many side stories in a way that, like, didn't feel like it ever detracted from the original. Yeah. Okay. We'll get into, like, the full show and I will share my fave captain moments. I'm the the captain defender in this episode, (laughs) apparently. The captain Um, champion. I I He he doesn't need defending. We all love captain. No, no, no. Everyone loves captain. But, like, (laughs) yes, I will champion captain. I'll make sure captain's in the conversation. You're the captain of captains. I am. Okay. (laughs) Synopsis time. Student body president Tin has a secret crush on Gun, the head of the music club and lead singer of the middling band Chinzilla. The son of the principal, Tin is instructed to axe any clubs that don't boost their school's reputation. The music club tops that list and Tin is therefore Gun's number one enemy. Desperate to save his club, Gun will do anything, even pledge servitude to Tin. When Tin learns Chinzilla has a rule that band members aren't permitted to date until they win the Hot Wave music contest, he vows to do whatever it takes to help them do just that. Oh, so Very cute. cute synopsis. I love how this is like faux enemies to lovers. Yeah. <laughs> like we were never actually enemies. No. We were never actually. I went into this thinking like this is going to be an enemies to lovers thing. I mean, Gun was definitely uh a Gun was sus. Of I don't know that it was like he was his enemy, but he was like sus of him. He was yes. like, "You're here to take me down," and I'm like, he was like grumpy about it. Like yes. he he wasn't even like an enemy about it. He was just like grumpy about it. He was like, "I have to save my man." He was just like grumbly. Oh, uh, this casting! This whole casting was perfect. I mean, this little uh show that they. That they got Gemini fourth Satang and who was the fourth one? 
Ford from. Oh, right? oh, the show. The yes, Ford? yes, yes. The um high school boy show. Yeah, the whatever yeah. whatever Jim and I Fourth w- got their GMM TV thing from. Uh, they like racked up with these boys. They really did. Like they hit the jackpot. A la Superboy, sure. where they put these boys in a competition show together, and they were like, "Now, now kiss." kiss. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, "Oh, I see it." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I like don't even know where to start. The synopsis is really good. It definitely feels like it covers the why you want to start watching the show, like what the general basis is. And there's a little more depth to it as we go through because we do get like fun PSA moments, which I feel GMM TV is really leaning into these PSA moments of like what are the gay issues? What are the teen issues? What are the issues in society as it applies? Because I thought it was a really cool moment. And this is skipping to the end where we have that teacher issue where he overhears the teacher. But right before that, he's like, Oh, the reaction has been great. Like, it's fine. Everyone loves us. Like, it's no big deal. And then there's that moment where he's like, Oh yeah, there's going to be some haters. Like, even if everything feels like rainbows and butterflies, there's yeah. always that moment. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for me, so I did start this kind of late because I was mm-hmm. like, uh, high school babies, but right. I, I did obviously start it. The obvi- conversation, and I finished it. you couldn't the avoid it. The conversation around it, right. You couldn't avoid it. Also, look, I'll be honest with you. We were going to interview Gemini and Ford and I had to like, yeah, I had to watch the show. I had <laughs> no other option. You had to. Uh, yeah. And so like, that's what made yeah. me start it is that like, I knew we were interviewing Gemini and Ford mm-hmm. because that conversation got started pretty early for us with this interview. Right. And so what kept me, I think there were a couple of reasons that like really sucked me in for this show Mm -hmm. and made me not feel like it was just this like high school show, which it was, it was just a high school show. But more than anything, I felt like this show was like a vehicle for the music, which I really appreciated and loved. And I really, really loved kind of the dream like I don't know how to describe this it's almost like a dream like high school uh okay I wish there was a better way for me to explain this it's it's a high school drama where like real high school things happen and like clearly like they are high schoolers and it's got this tinge of realness to it like with the fight on the mountain when they're like going up the mountain they're like I'm thirsty and how dare you have a drink and we're all thirsty right like this ridiculousness um but there were so many scenes that were shot like like a dream sequence, like a music yeah. video dream sequence almost. Mm-hmm. And I really loved the way it was shot. Like yeah. I was like, this is shot really cool. Mm-hmm. I loved all of the dancing. I was obsessed with the dancing. So cute. And like I really appreciated about this show that it felt to me like, oh, and I should have looked this movie up in advance. And this is my fault. Um, While you're looking that up, I remember somebody on Twitter being like, this feels very campy, but campy in the most complimentary way. It was funny and it was light and but it wasn't being like too silly or slapstick like that moment where. Tin is trying to help Gunn's band find the musical instruments. And he's like texting him because for a hot moment, uh, Tin was pretending to be somebody else to communicate right. with Gunn. And so a classic trope, apparently that's going to show up in GMM TV all year long, because we know this is part of the plot of agenda. RGL and hidden agenda, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But but in Hidden Agenda, does he, pre- he doesn't pretend to be someone else. I guess not. No, but in RGL, right, with yeah. Sun, she's, like, pretending to be someone right. else. Yes, yes. Uh, Where he's like, oh, my gosh, is he watching me? And then he's like, no, I'm not watching you. Like, that cute little, yeah. like, s- like, silly moment where it's like, this is very in-your-face comedy, but it it's fun. But then it does get more realistic and serious. I would say it starts more I- idyllic when we have the covers of songs and, like, this over the top dream sequences of like the dancing and like all those things. And then when we start to get into the actual original songs, it feels more grounded and more realistic in their life. Yeah. I don't know about like grounded and realistic and idyllic. It's more of like the way it shot, like because even towards the end, like for example, again, like skipping ahead to episode 11, which Mm -hmm. I think was my favorite episode in the whole season. I really liked that episode and I liked the dynamic of it, that it was like, it was this friend group and it was about the friends. It wasn't yeah. about Tin and Gun and it wasn't about like it wasn't about anything besides mm-hmm. these 
friends and mm-hmm. like them going through something yeah. as friends. And so I think that's why I liked that episode so much. Right. But like even in episode 11, the scene, like the way that they shoot it when they first start walking up the mountain, like with the little banners along the side, like it's very like dreamlike the way mm-hmm. that it's shot. And so yeah. like, yeah, I think of course, yeah, once they get to the like songs that they've written, whatever, like for whatever, like, yeah. yes, it's like, it's deeper into the characters, but right. I'm more so when I say dream, like I mean like the shooting style. Right. Yeah. But it also reminds me very much of this movie called Sing Street, mm-hmm. which I'm hoping somebody who has listened has seen this movie because it is, one of the best movies I think I've ever seen in my whole life. Oh, interesting. Like, it is an excellent movie. Is that American? No. Okay. It's about this Irish band in the 80s, and they're, like, a high school band. Uh-huh. And they're, like, trying to make it as a high school band and, like, get over to, like, London, and they want it. And it's just, like, this show reminds me a lot of Sing Street, but Sing Street has some, like, really, like, dark parts to it. I inspired by. But, like, it's a very, it has similar where there are, like, dreamlike sequences and, like, you know, the dancing dream. Mm-hmm. It, like, it has a shot that almost shot for shot looks exactly like that towards the end of it. Yeah, it's, like... Very, very cool. Anyways, this show reminded me so, so much of that movie, which is an excellent movie, and I love that movie so much. I'm hoping someone who's listened has also seen this movie. If you've seen this movie, <laughs> please comment. Um, or if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it because it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I just – I really love movies and shows and media in general that can work music in in a non-cheesy way. Yeah. Yeah. I – the music was so smart in this show – it's funny because you say that your favorite episode is Ep 11. And of course that's what we asked the boys. Like what's your favorite episode? Yeah. Uh, I can't even, I was trying to think like what would be my favorite episode? Every episode is so rich and there's just so many details, so many pieces to it that like I can think through the entire series and think of like specific scenes that I really like throughout it. You know, like when we, when we have our beat frolic and like we're having that moment between gun and sound on the beach where he's like, he's like, I'm going through it, writing this song. And he's like, I can't figure it out. And then he just like confesses that he likes when, and it's just like such a sweet moment because then you have 10 in the background being like, Oh my God. Like he's trying to hide his relationship (laughs) with gun, like the dynamic of everything. And then we have that moment between, uh, poor and two where everyone has left sweet poor with his Thai barbecue. And he's like, I made food for everyone. And, and and two is like I'll be here I'll like eat it with you and then they're taking out the trash and we have that almost fall kiss the fall kiss that could have been we watched that part together and I remember like we were like is it is it is it gonna be real is it like because because you know Mark and Ford have been like trolling all of us all season long right and so we've all been like is it uh, 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 and then the fall kiss that could have been GMMTV why this is such an experience watching this show for the mark of it all knowing what is to come for mark in 2023 because you start with mark in 2023 with with ford and you start him with a girl the warp and, effect and you start him with oh like a baby de- a baby mama situation Moonlight chicken. and so like uh, like bless stream mtv for giving us all the for- all the mark we could ever want i mean in ma- different iterations but like i'm excited for the, the neo mark of it all but like also i'm not done with the the ford mark of it all here's what's funny <sighs> about this whole situation is that it's like the range of mark right because yes yeah. the warp effect mark versus my school president mark yes. versus moonlight chicken mark very drastically different storylines so from one to another yeah <laughs> And so it's like, yes, the range, but also at the same time, it's like across all through that Mark is still Mark. Like he is still this like dopey, fun, like he is the same. Yeah. They're different characters going through different things. And I don't look at them and just see Mark. Like he's a great actor. And so I see the characters. characters. But it's funny because it's like, you know, like the duality, but not really duality because it's like the same. Like it's Mark. It's like signature mark across all of it, which I think is going to make Only Friends so fascinating because at least based on the trailer, that is not dopey, silly, fun mark. I have compartmentalized Only Friends. That that lives in a part of the brain that like hasn't hasn't fully like registered. I all that we're getting from that show. Mark really snuck up on me in this one. Like I somehow like 
I have become so endeared to Mark and I don't the thing is I don't realize I'm endeared to Mark until I see him like something act, like I don't think about him regularly or anything he doesn't just like pop in my brain right, right, right. but like something activates in my head when I just see him like I made this comment the other day that like if I ever had to like actually like interact with Mark in real life I might throw up on him like <laughs> Because something just happens to me when I see his face. I don't know how I became so endeared to Mark. I like I don't it's know. The I know nothing about him. I know nothing about Mark besides the fact that his name is Mark. It's the talent. I have thought about quite a few actors in the BL world where I'm like, I don't know anything about this person. Uh, I guess similar to like new like Nui of Tainu, mm. I love new as an actor i have watched everything he's ever been in but i don't know anything about him as a person like i even watched a like sit down interview with him and like i don't know his family i don't know where he's from i've never looked up that information i don't even know where he went to school or what he majored in like i know nothing about him but i love him as an actor so i feel like it's the same thing where like yeah, Mark just has, like, such talent that you admire that when you, like, yeah. see his sweet face on screen. Because then you have someone like Ford, who you very much know, like, who he is as, like, an, a, like, celebrity, right? Oh, like, I know nothing about Ford besides the fact that he's constantly wilded on Twitter. on social this media. Is, this is he's all so I know cute. about Ford. He is wild and gmmtv come collect this child because it's so good ford the, the casting of this show the dynamic of everybody together i feel like this is the first time that i've seen a cast do so much promotion outside of a show <laughs> they together do, like, friendship work I, that's really <laughs> they true do, they really because like their tiktoks are outstanding so i love all of their little friend tiktok like they look like they genuinely have the best time before yeah. we were recording this while you were getting ready i was watching the like chinzilla concert that they do with like school rangers Mm -hmm. and like genuinely all of these boys just seem like they have fun together and that's the making of a good ship right is like when you have two people that seem like they genuinely like to be around each other which you get with gemini and fourth but like with this show what's so interesting about this is this whole cast genuinely seems like they like being around each other every single one of them like individually seems like they're having yes i friendship them i could see this show getting a season two in like a university setting there is a book i saw on twitter (gasps) so there is a follow-up book and yes they go i could tell you all about it i i will try and find the tweet yeah yeah um and I will, and I'll like put it in the link if I can find the tweet. I'm so sorry, it was a while ago. But um, somebody amazing on Twitter explained what happens in the next book, the follow up mm. book. If they follow the books, that yes, they go to university. Um, Mark and Ford go, so Twee and Poor go to medical school. And <laughs> there's like this whole thing about how the moon of the medical faculty is, sh- is chasing the top student in the medical fa- faculty. Yes, yeah, so, so Twee Poor Real, Incredible. according to the books. Incredible. Um, and then Tin and Gun go to the same university. And I believe Sound goes to the university with them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, like, according to Twitter, I don't know if this is real or not, but uh. this is what I read on Twitter. There also was another Twitter shout out that I wanted to make because this show is amazing on Twitter. This is one of yeah. my favorite. Like this, We've talked about this a lot, too. The fandom surrounding this show was so cool to be a part yes. of and to watch because everyone cared so much about these characters and the show. It stayed very much within the show. That's what I love so much about the fan conversation about this show is when I saw people talk talking about this show and these characters gun, yeah. they talked about tin and gun they did not talk about gemini and fourth mm-hmm. which i thought was so cool and it's so nice to see like in the fandom that people really yeah. are kind of like evolving when it comes to the way that like we look at ships and it was interesting especially because moonlight chicken came out right. while my school president was still mm-hmm. airing and so of course we got leaming and heart which yeah. is like a completely different oh my oh my god i'm gonna cry <laughs> just thinking about it luckily this is not a moonlight chicken series sunday but <laughs> i saw people talking about both characters like even in the same breath like both shows and they never once did gemini fourth get brought up it was like well right. leaming this blah 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 mm-hmm. or tin that blah 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 it right. was never people have been very good about seeing 
the characters. The, the characters and the yeah. characters' romance and the characters' chemistry. And keeping that chemistry and dynamic very separate from Gemini and Fourth as the people. Right. Um, which I thought was really cool. I did want to shout out um, at Tele Puan. Um, so vice versa era, Stan, I see. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, uh, Aries Uni Era, um, <clears throat> who has interacted with us quite a bit, but I randomly ran across this tweet. Um, it's, I think, the best edit on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And it's Tin Gun episode by episode. And the reason I like this so much is the next reason that I think everyone should watch the show. It heavily features, it literally is just them looking at each other. Which, like, oh, I don't know who taught Gemini how to, like, look at other human beings. It's insane. But yeah. that's why this edit is the best edit on Twitter. So go look it up. At Tale Puan. I will put the link with the tweet in it's the because, description of this. It's because he's a lead singer of a band. Because I mean, you have to, like, engage The club your is where au- he goes. Yes. You have to engage your audience. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Like, right? Like, if you are able to engage an audience when your band is a high school band. I also like that parallel of, like, Gemini himself was supposed to be competing for Hot Wave. Gemini was good, yeah. But, like. <laughs> Like he I know the cast the opposite casting of these two uh, just everything about the dynamic of this cast and these actors within the show is just it's so fun I would put yeah. this at like a top watch of I think this is a must watch yeah if somebody were which we I think are gonna do this episode soon but like mm-hmm. if somebody were to ask me like what do I have to watch yeah this would be on there yeah. because I think it's just the perfect example of a high school BL. I really do. I think it's fun and it's light, but it has some substance and it's mm-hmm. just like, it's not deep and it's not teaching you a lesson. If you feel like it is, that's great for you. But like, I don't really think, I think it's right. more about being like this fun, light, fluffy, but also like with some substance to it. So it's not just like yeah. clouds and sunshine, but yes, I think Gemini and Forth are two of the most talented actors. Like, I cannot wait to see them grow as actors because, first of all, how could they grow? They're so good already. They're so good. Susu. The w- <laughs> Susu na. The way that they, the, but especially Gemini, yeah. just looks at other people. Like, across every role at this point, the two things I've seen him in. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because acting with your eyes, and this is why it's so crazy that this kid failed drama class. Because acting with your eyes, in my humble opinion, is one of the most difficult things mm-hmm. to do. I respect actors so, so much that can do this. Sia is, I think, the best at this. He mm-hmm. does it so wonderfully yeah. and beautifully. And it's just like, if I can watch an actor and I know what that character is feeling based on their eyes, nothing else. No words, no eyebrows, no mouth mo- no tears, nothing. Just the look in their eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it just blows me over. And Gemini can do that. And yeah. the way the way that like Tin and Gun look at each other, especially, oh is just gosh. like really outstanding. Like the yeah. acting here is truly outstanding. Yeah, that moment where they've had that confrontation because the somebody has posted that picture of them in the park and then gun is like, it's okay. I've already told people like it was, it was just for a music video. And then they run, he runs out and he's standing like about to go out into the rain. And he's having this moment where you're like, he's realizing, yes, I've told 10. It's okay that we haven't told anyone. Like he understands that like, he's not in that place to tell people yet, but he really wants to. And he knows that they're kind of, they've kind of hit a wall in their relationship that like, the people that they the people that gun loves know about them but the people that tin loves doesn't and he's he i think he's having this realization that oh gosh this is a big moment and i don't know what to do in this because it feels like a make or break situation and both in that moment both of these actors just portray that emotion it's not over the top because like Gun isn't crying yet until he like goes out into the rain and he holds his nose and it's just such a sweet the moment nose. where he's like and then they hug and th- we talked about this too the hugs in this show so are just sweet. the sweetest where it's like the way that that Tin and the way that Jim and I chose to just lean into gu- into forth in those moments where you can tell 
this Tin has been in love with Gunn for years now. He's liked him for so long. So you would you would want to see his character lean into because he's emotionally already there. So you'd want him to lean into like the connection of it, right? Like the intimacy of it. Like he finally gets to be with this boy that he's like had hard eyes for for forever, and he's like now now is my moment. And like the choices that yeah, the choices they made with these characters. We're solid. I just, yeah. it's overwhelming. The other thing I want to talk about is the parent involvement in this show. Great parents. Because we, yes, we get great parents. Twitter going through it over Tin's mom the entire show was probably my favorite conversation. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I really loved, will yeah. They, will she or won't she be evil? Be evil. The big question. I mean, listen, clearly, like, everyone has PTSD from evil, like, be all parents. Yes. But they're like, she's going to be evil. I just know it. Like, I felt like she did a great job of staying true to herself while being supportive. Yeah. She sh- she shared her concerns, but she was able to support her son in the way that sh- he needed to be supported. Listen, I'm watching Bed Friends right now, and they're oh like... Oh, my God. That mom is the worst. Yeah. There is no evil mom besides this mom. It's true. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Like... I this this unpopular opinion I was like less invested in the parent like Mm. the parents were nice and they were a nice addition I thought they were done well but like I didn't really care Mm -hmm. like honestly like for me I just was like eh they were the they were the least important yeah 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 but you were really going through it over like just how much you loved the parents. I, yeah, I love and I well because I thought that Gun's mom was just like that dynamic was so sweet, yeah. and the fact that like Tin confessed to Gun's mom first, and he very much involved her in that. Like he was trying to be respectful of her in that situation because we see that a lot in Western dramas where it's like there's zero parent involvement, right? Where you're like you're in high school, your parents unless they're like not physically around, like. They should be there. You should be conversing with them in some form or fashion. And so you want good representation on TV of like what healthy communication is between a parent. But man, I thought they were going to do bad things to Gun's mom. And I was like, I'm going to need Gun's mom to, to live. Like, I will say one of my favorite things can't. was that everyone was like, wouldn't they have to shave her head to operate on that tumor? That was like the thing that took people out of it. Oh, funny. They were like, why isn't her head shaved? Unless they did like <laughs> microscopic surgery. I feel like even then you have to shave a head for... No, <laughs> you don't. There's, cer- there's certain brain surgeries that I think you can get away with, like, depending on where it is. I know that that's like... I, I don't know you why. You your like, MD now. I love. This. I don't know why. Like I've looked into this before. I want to say it's because Did you of do like it a, because of this. A, because, because people because were of, like because of some TV show. No, I never saw that conversation, but I did see some TV show where like they didn't shave the person's head, and I was like, how is that possible? So speaking of this, I also had another tweet, another Twitter, because like honestly, shout out to Twitter for this whole yeah. like series. Yeah, um, was interesting. So another tweet, but this was just from today. So this is like very like breaking news. Is um, there was an interview with like the writing team and the director Mm -hmm. and apparently in the first draft of the script, the director, oh, ow, ow, is it ow? I'm I'm not sure. Um, Apparently said that they had planned for Chinzilla to win Hot Wave, but Gun's mom died. Oh my gosh! How so, dare! I'd rather Chinzilla lose so that Gun's mom can live. And it goes on to say Gun would be left alone in the world, and Tin would help him to continue living. But the heads of the company didn't approve. Oh, thank God! They didn't allow anyone to die in the series. If GMM TV does anything right, it's keeping Gun's mom I just alive. Like I read that earlier, and I thought I was like, "That's amazing!" <laughs> Dang, that's dark. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the question is, what is your favorite song from this show? Oh, <laughs> that's really hard. That's really oh hard. God. Okay, I can start because smile, please. Absolutely, everything about that about that song, the way that it starts, the like, the little chorus, the hook. Every I love that song. I so do much. love that song. Uh. That was in my top two. Like, I was trying to decide between the two of them. So, yeah. I guess I'll go with the other one since you piss, pick Smile, please. So, obviously, you got my back. Yes. I mean, I literally, like, I have cute. brain rot because of that song. I'll just randomly so walk good. around and be like, you got my back, back. It's so good. Give it up. Give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it literally just, like, <sighs> I have brain rot because of that song. 
Yeah. But I also I also give her a smile, please, the that's right. Yes. Like, yimsy, yimsy, yimsy. It's yo, so, yo. It's so cute. Yeah. yeah. I love the like the music videos. I have never been so sad to not be in Thailand to not be able to go to this concert. Ugh. This concert would be so fun. I know. This we were talking about this too because I typically am the one that's like staying up to watch the streaming things, whereas like you don't. And so you were saying that like you potentially will watch the uh, I'll probably do this one. I think it'll be worth it I, because be I am such a concert goer. I always like, yeah, I my like since I was old enough to have like a thought mm-hmm. for the most part, have loved going to concerts. Like I talk about how I've been a professional fangirl my mm-hmm. whole life because I have. I've always been into like and I've gone through phases in my life of different right. types of music and bands and things like this. But I've always gone to see live music. Right. And so I part part of it for me is the like energy of the live show and you just don't get that Mm -hmm. virtually you just don't at least I don't and so like when I when COVID happened I like it was really hard on me for lots of reasons but that was one of them was like that was one of my hobbies like I was going to see live music like little local bands and little local shows like every weekend like sometimes multiple times a week because that's just how much I like going to see live music and COVID happened and I couldn't see it at all and so Mm -hmm. I was so excited when they started doing virtual concerts and then like it was almost more depressing because it was so just not that experience for me even with like you would think the big, big, like, stadium shows, right? Like, I've seen BTS in stadiums, Mm -hmm. and I've had floor seats, but I've also had, like, really crappy seats, like, up at the top. And there's still something about, like, the energy. Like, it's not better for me seeing it on a screen, like, at all. And so, yeah, for me, the whole, like, virtual thing just doesn't – it's just not worth it for me to, like, stay up late and be tired and whatever. Like, I've done it to support, but, like – and. I'll usually like I'll buy a ticket and then you know you can have my money I support you I support you with my funds yeah, yeah, yeah. um but this one I think it'll be worth it I really do yeah I really really do they're gonna be enjoyable to watch it's gonna be uh it's gonna be so good yeah if you're I think Thailand, this one's this one'll be worth it. See it for sure yeah uh the show I it looks like they're starting to film is it 23 and a half 23.5 yes. 23.5 which is our GL which again is yeah. has that similar storyline that I was talking about where like at right. first son doesn't know that it's her right, right? right, right. Um, I'm so excited for this GL the one thing that I am a little nervous about because listen I always bring up not everybody gets 100% right? right we cannot learn from our mistakes if we don't bring them up yeah yeah there is a pocket of G4 fans <laughs> that have loved to point out that G4 is stealing the show in Moonlight Chicken. And this is about January 4th. And this is not about Earth Mix. And they're starting oh, yeah, to, yeah. and I've seen the comments, be like, I don't know why they're even trying to push this GL. The whole show is going to be about Gemini and fourth. (laughs) No, it's not like they're really good actors and they have great chemistry and they're wonderful. But like, let's reel it in for 23 and a half. Like this is a milk love moment and let's keep it a milk love moment. And I know I've seen the, I've seen the converse people being like, why is there a BL side story in a GL? Like, why couldn't we've gotten a GL side story and people on the GL conversation are like, upset but then like you know it is I mean, what that, it is like that's fair uh, i wonder is tw- i wonder if anybody knows i don't know is 23 and a half based on a novel is that why there's a beale side story is oh, because maybe. it's just like in the novel right. i don't know but yeah oh, my school president will be such a like mark of time yeah I, I, this the show is so sweet it really was oh, i can't wait i can't wait to see will we get Gemini fourth in twenty twenty four. I mean, they, G4 they are booked and busy are, in twenty twenty three. I kind of want them to have a break, but can also you imagine, no. Can you imagine in like three, two? I want it to be in like five years, but like in two or three years, we get a uh, my school president only friend situation for this group of boys. <laughs> No, because I they'll be in their mid twenties at that point. I still don't want that. It no, I don't. Wait, I don't want my school president to make it only friends. No, I don't want that. <laughs> no, thank you. No, uh, these will always be babies. Yes, even when they're like twenty five. I mean, maybe if they have different characters, but I don't want like an only friend situation. No, no, no I'm talking my about my school president. No. I'm talking about these 
actors oh doing something okay. only sure. friends in yeah, like five cute. years yeah 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 okay yeah sure yeah there's a new i was like group of babies. you said my school present only fans and i was like no i don't want this group of friends to do to be no <laughs> no i would like to see them i i would watch these friends mature and grow through life yeah but i don't want what, it to be an only friend situation no no no. i want to see these actors yeah i mean we will see we'll, we will see mark in that show so yeah there you go mark is the through line through all of gmm 2023 Yes. Also, not to be disingenuous to earlier Ayla, Captain was so cute in this whole show and I loved him so much because yeah. in episode 11, he was like, he's so funny. He yeah. reminds me a lot of Bank Tanatee. Okay, uh-huh. here's why. Not just in episode 11, but like throughout the whole show. Yeah. yeah. Because Bank Tanatee is the leader of Element. Yes. Technically. In, in, in the technical <laughs> in sense of things. Theory. In theory. If he's the leader. Yeah. But like, okay, if you've ever watched the Element part switch tiki taka ta uh-huh. if you haven't go watch it it's pretty funny there's one point at the end of that part switch where like this fight like god and torah get in a fight because god is annoyed at torah because torah has ta- it, torah's like has switched parts with god right. and torah has messed up god's parts Obviously, <laughs> he like didn't do it right, right, right and right. god is like mad and he's like like literally like yelling in ways i've never seen god like yell before and, like, he is joking partially, right? But, sure, like, sure. They're, they're, like, they've broken out in this fight. And the sweet Bang Tanity, who's the leader of this group, who should be reigning them in, is just, like, <laughs> the whole time. He's just standing in the back just going. <laughs> and this is Bang Tanity in most situations. Yeah. Where, like, in most situations in Star Hunter, like, Bang Tanity is the P. He was the first one in that group of all those boys to, like, get a show. Mm-hmm. Like, he led a show as, like, the lead actor in a show first. Like, mm-hmm. straight out Superboy. He won Superboy. Like, he was, like, pretty... He, like, he and Pawn were, like, mm-hmm. the two that were, like... Like, five boys won Superboy, but those two, like, won Superboy, yeah, right? And so, like... Him. Tana Teep is like the P in most situations in Star right. Hunter, but he like just stands in the back and he's just like, and this is what I feel Captain is throughout this whole show. This yeah. is like how Yo kind of behaves throughout the whole show. It's like he just kind of watches the chaos and he's like, I will help you if you need my help. But otherwise, like, I'm just going to watch this. And like, and the fight on the mountain is especially indicative of this because like mm. they start going at each other almost and they have to be pulled back. And he's just like, Captain. And he's just like, didn't he? Didn't he also steal uh, Poor's crutch? Yes. He's standing there, and Eventually, for some reason, he has Poor's crutch. He has crutch. the crutch. I think because he's concerned so it's going to become a weapon. I'm not sure, but he's very much this like silent. Like he's like he's the character. He's like a chaotic neutral. Yeah. Somehow, like that doesn't exist, but like he's somehow chaotic neutral, and I love it. <laughs> and I love like his little like his little girl. I know. And he has like and he leads the little like during smile and is like and it's he's so cute. He's very cute. I <laughs> also love that he like abandons prom as soon as his girl shows up at yes. the at the last day of school. He's yeah. Like, Bye. He's, he's like, let's go get some ice cream. So cute. He's so cute and I love him. Oh, the show is so good. I love it. Okay. Uh, stay tuned for Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss it. You're not going to want to miss it. It's already been announced. Earth yes. and Mix. Crazy. Crazy. Makes no sense. This has been Let's Talk BL. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow all things Let's Talk BL at Let's Talk BL.